So I just want to start out by saying that I'm not a vet. None of this is to be taken as medical advice and I would highly recommend you go and see your vet before following anything. The whole purpose of this video is primarily just to show you the process that I took personally with my dog while he was recovering. Okay, so my dog Rover is about 13. He's a uh, rescue dog, so we're not 100% sure exactly how old he is. But he has separation anxiety, so we left him at a friend's place while we went and did groceries, came back, and our friend told us that he had acute vestibular disease. I had no idea what that was. But basically the symptoms are very similar to a stroke. So that was pretty scary. We went home and I started doing some research. So basically vestibular disease refers to sudden non-progressive disturbance of balance. So the most obvious symptoms you'll see is a sudden onset of loss of balance, disorientation, head tilt, and irregular eye jerking movements. So the irregular eye jerking is actually, the, the eyes sort of go, they'll shoot to one side and then slowly move back and then and depending on how far they've recovered the, the speed of that will change that's one of the main signs that it's probably not a stroke and it's most likely vestibular disease because that's the balance of their inner air being affected and it's just their eyes trying to catch up with the balance that they're feeling i'll leave a link in the description to the article so i kind of figured out what vestibular disease was and there's a few good videos on YouTube explaining what it is. But there was no real information that I could find on what I was in for and how to look after my dog. So the first thing I did was I started writing everything down. So what food he ate, what water he drank, and just general behavioral changes. Thought at least if I could keep a log of it, then the vet will be able to better diagnose my dog. So on the first day he threw up a little bit. That night he ate his dinner, he had to be hand fed, he was way too disorientated to actually eat himself. We really struggled to get him to drink any water, we couldn't really get him to drink out of the bowl, we tried to lift it up, tried a number of different things, but we figured out that if we kept our hands like this and sort of put it next to his head so we could lick it out of our hands without having to de-anchor his head from the edge of his basket, then he could kind of drink some water and you know that was that was a good start. On the second day he actually jumped on the bed in the morning which is his standard routine. He needed a little bit of help to get up but he was still his same self. He uh, was you know affectionate and cuddly which is how we know him and I think that was really important to us to see that it hasn't really changed his personality, it's just affecting the way that he feels. He continued to drink water from our hands. He wasn't interested in his dog roll anymore, which he normally goes nuts for. And he also normally goes nuts for fish oil tablets. And he had no interest in fish oil tablets whatsoever. I kept trying regularly because uh, Mega 3 is supposed to be quite beneficial when your dog has vestibular disease, but um, just wasn't interested at all. Uh, I tried a number of different foods. Eventually I figured out that if I boiled chicken pieces and pulled the meat off the bone, uh, I could hand feed him that and he would eat it. So at least he was getting some food in and chicken meat by itself should actually be reasonably nutritious for a dog. Got to the point where he kind of could walk if I had him on the lead. So I put a harness on him so that I could kind of hold him up so he wouldn't fall over, give him a little bit more confidence because the thing that I noticed was that every time he went outside and he lost his balance and he fell over, he got really discouraged and he was kind of like, yeah, no, nah, I'm not doing this and I want to go back inside. Presumably it was also making him very nauseous, but I think the main thing that it was affecting was his confidence. So if I had the harness on him and I could help him walk, he would get a lot more confident and he would be more likely to do the things that he has to do. So he got to the point where he could pee standing up, which was good. Um, he was very, very shaky. His legs were three times as wide as normal, but he managed to do his business. So on day two, we managed to give him a little bit of food. He wasn't really interested in his normal food, so we had to give him some combinations of human food, basically just stuff that we would normally never give to him, but that seemed like a treat to him at a time. So on day five, he actually ate and drank less. He was becoming more and more frustrated, I think. So I decided to take him to the vet. The vet pretty much confirmed all of my assumptions. It was vestibular disease. But yeah, the main thing is just that the vet can rule out things like air infection and so on and so forth. Things that actually need to be clinically treated in order for the dog to get better. If it comes back as being acute or old dog vestibular disease, then it's really just a waiting game. You have to be there and provide care for your dog. So the vet prescribed 25 milligrams of meclizine hydrochloride. That seems to be pretty much the bog standard thing to start with. Uh, and he said that regardless of the size of the dog, it's 25 milligrams a day. Again, I'm not a vet. Don't take my medical advice. I don't want to be responsible for any of that. But um, yeah, this is basically what I ended up getting. 
So this is available over the counter. The main point of it was basically just to get him to stop being nauseous so that he could eat and drink and not feel sick all the time. I definitely noticed that he got a lot more confident when we got rid of his nausea. Uh, that was partially a double-edged sword because he was still very off balance and he would run around and pretty much crash into things. So he had to stay on top of it. The best thing I found was to keep him on the lead so that I could prevent him from injuring himself without having to constantly keep an eye on him. He was still incredibly fussy. So uh, a couple of things that worked for us throughout um, the first sort of two weeks was a little bit of dog roll mixed with toast. Uh, dipped in stew gravy from a stew that we had. When I had pizza, I would feed him the pizza crust. He was really into the pizza crust. The main constant that seemed to work was the chicken. He really just liked the boiled chicken meat. Although there were times where he wouldn't eat that either, but it was more a case of... So normally we'd feed him twice a day. That's a standard routine. But what we did instead was we just tried to feed him maybe like once an hour or so and just see if he wanted the food. And that way we managed to get him to eat enough food to sustain himself without, you know, fearing any malnutrition or anything. Additionally to the chicken, he was also really into raw beef mints. That was the only thing we could actually get him to eat pretty much without fail. So even the boiled chicken and other things he would sort of turn his nose up at on a semi-regular basis, but the beef mints was sort of the staple that he would always eat. Um, sometimes I would have to sort of pretend, you know, I'd, you know, pretend to eat the food myself and then give it to him so that he thought it was, hey, this is human food, this is special, I get to eat some of that. And then he was more into it. So the biggest milestone was to get him to eat and drink by himself. He didn't touch any food without being hand fed for at least the first seven days. It was only on day seven that he sort of ate any food out of his bowl by himself. The same with the drinking water. So he spent most of his time in his box. He was sleeping most of the day, presumably because when his eyes are closed, the world stopped spinning and he didn't feel sick. So he, on day seven, he managed to get up out of his box, go to his water bowl, drink by himself, unassisted. It, it felt like a major victory. Um, I'd been hand, you know, I'd been spending about four hours a day hand feeding him, hand watering him, taking him outside to do his thing. It was pretty exhausting. I mean. He's my dog and I love him, but four hours a day actively spent on your dog is challenging. So about two weeks in, I managed to get him down to about 50-50 with his normal food again. I'd pretty much take the beef mints and his dog roll, mash them up together, and it would kind of trick him into eating his normal food. Still not real keen on the dry food at that point, so, so I just kept feeding him the chicken in the morning. I'm currently on day 20 of recovery. He's still not quite back on dry food in the morning, but what I've been doing is I've been taking his dog biscuits, adding a little bit of hot water, and then mixing it with some canned food that he really likes. And he seems to eat that. He leaves a couple of the biscuits at the bottom of the bowl sometimes, but hey, he's eating by himself. So that's a win as far as I'm concerned. And for a couple of days now, he's been eating dog roll again for dinner as per normal. So yeah, I hope that helps a little bit. It's definitely scary when your dog first gets vestibular disease because A, if you don't know what it is and it can seem like this is end of life stuff i think the important thing is to rule out stroke so definitely do go to your vet and get them to do a proper diagnosis well again i'm not trying to provide any sort of clinical advice i'm merely just showing you how i went through the process so yeah if your dog does get these sort of symptoms i highly recommend you take them to the vet it's got a lot to do with the age of the dog so vestibular disease is substantially more common in old dogs but yeah it's definitely a battle and it takes a lot of time and a lot of patience, but they're generally going to make a pretty full recovery. I'm on day 20 now, and in terms of maintenance, he's pretty much back to normal. I can still notice the head tilt. I, um, he's a little bit off balance still, but yeah, he's pretty much his old happy self again. <laughs>